Uh, if never, that never were, forget. If that was real gameplay, it might have taken a couple hours, but damn it, we would have won. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. We could probably dis dismantle an actual army, but no. Nah. So, what the hell are all of the rest of these things? This is really stupid. This is the side story mode. Side story mode? After you... You unlock them all after you beat, uh, after you beat each stage or do a, or do something in each stage. Hmm. We're playing as specific characters, doing doing things that happen, certain things that happen with other characters at the exact same time. Hmm. So it's like all their various events that were happening in the exact same place. They even have reference points to it here in the novel. That's kind of cool. But the thing is, more often than not, you're just play, you're playing as you're playing as characters you don't like or characters that suck. I'll do one, I guess. <laughs> Or it's or it's usually something uninteresting, or like uh, one I one that I remember is I think it was one of the earlier ones is uh, Masayuki. Okay, never mind. Nope. Is <laughs> is uh, Masayuki uh, training uh, Ben Maru? Hmm. That's a neat concept, but it's like you could have put those in actual stages. What the fuck is this? You can tell, but you can tell by the complete by the coin symbol over some of them that I've only done a handful of them. Hmm. So I'll do this and then give and then give a whirl on the trial mode. Okay. And then we'll and then we'll be done with it. Music's completely gone. By the way, I love it. <laughs> Is it? Sounds like it. I don't hear anything else. <laughs> oh, there we go. Do these side stories have actual cutscenes about them? No. Okay, it's then pretty much pointless. Yeah. If I, if I had Japanese text, and if you guys, if I could read Japanese slash you guys understood Japanese, then that might be a different matter. But considering uh, A doesn't is happening, and I don't think B is happening anytime soon. Uh, yeah, no. Sadly about that. Jesus. I really gotta mess around with uh, Ieyasu more at some point. He seems like he'd be really fun to fuck around with bosses. If only his <laughs> regular attacks have better AoE, maybe. His regular attacks make him one of the worst characters in Vanilla 3. Yeah, no, definitely. But if he managed to have an attack that's basically real impact with Delamay Cry, then I see high potential in that. For a very powerful single strike attack. Well, Motherfucker's I... got a hell of an attack buff in this game, though. Yeah. Like, that's definitely he usually doesn't, later. like, again, we were level 30 when we fought him in the story mode, and he still killed you in a couple of hits. Yep. That's it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe he cuts up the heavy character now. <laughs> I suppose that would make sense, but it, uh, but it belies his frame. It really does? I, think, I don't know. I think, is this the, is it, this is the instructions. Oh my god. We put the instructions in game. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's, that's where they probably should be. At least these are in color. <laughs> you're right. It's an improvement? Question mark. No, you're right. I never thought about that. Just put a fucking PDF Options file. Menu. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't actually have to print them. We we don't have to waste ink, so we can make them colorful. Oh my god. PSN yeah. store to buy your DLC. What do we have for DLC? Nothing on the American side. I mean, clearly. <laughs> uh. Sadly. <laughs> Again, it would not be hard to port at all. DLC, options, instructions, uh, gallery, trial, side story, and main story. Hmm. I do like the presentation, at least, of this menu. It's simple, but it's effective. I agree. It actually does give me uh, d good the city of flashbacks. <laughs> I emphasize good. Yes. Better what? times, man. <laughs> All right, so is this the <laughs> trial mode? Yeah. Sweet. Do you... Give the madman a fucking shot. Yeah, you know what? Uh, let's uh, let's do what we did for uh, for uh, the DLC mission from Pirate Warriors One, where we swapped uh, where we swapped off every couple of, every certain number of stages. We did do that, didn't we? There's a total of sixty, so let's swap off every ten stages. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> uh yeah. Surprised you didn't change your uh, color back to the one you had before. I it's like the white one. Okay. Uh, and good. Cool. So if more or less here, it's just what talking whatever about the game. The story yeah. is not that important anymore. Yeah, I do like the the story though. 
Um, it's just the fucking difficulty spike at the end there and the lack of, of uh, everything, like a checkpoint system, is kind of a pain in the ass. But the game itself as a whole... Um, the it, gameplay? It's fantastic. It feels a little join, disjointed that, or a little j jilted? No. <laughs> Stilted? Stilted, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. That there's only two new characters... And two characters got new move sets. Two, uh, two fully new, uh, two fully flesh new characters, mind you. There's technically yes. six. Yeah. So in that regard, I own, I have slight issues with that being sold as a new game. But on the other hand, considering the sheer brevity of how strong uh, Yuki Mora and Masamune are in this game, I think that kind of covers it. Well, the thing you have to remember is that uh, this is billed as a smaller spinoff. It's not billed as uh, Sengoku Basura 5. Yeah, this is basically made... I'm pretty sure this was made as a direct thing to um, Silver Warriors for actually telling the full story. Kind about of, Yukimura's yeah. beginning and end. I would actually like to see... I would actually like to see uh, the uh, the Resident formula fully f uh, fully fleshed out with either a, to a Toyotomi or an Oda story... Or hell, even just a Masamune story, because there's a lot you can pull even from that. I would really like to see this, yeah, this, like the Resident story done with Oda, because the way Oda goes out in uh, Samurai Warriors 4 is fantastic. <laughs> he literally disappears into a fire and dies. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Stop forgiving me, damn it! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I suppose tr uh, forgiving Mitsuhide... And having him lose his shit in this kind of game would be difficult, but still. <laughs> no, I think... I imagine, I imagine they probably want to build Mitsuhiri as a bigger bad guy in the long run than no Oda. But Matsunaga, but yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I feel you. Mitsuhiri also betrayed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you see how you how you win 90% of this game. Yeah. Th this bullshit. Look how, how I'm not even anywhere near either of them, and I'm killing them by proximity. Yep. I think part of it is the sheer mobility you have during your attacks. You're not left vulnerable whatsoever during it. <laughs> you can carry enemies, you can drag across the screen, you have range attacks, you're able to affect pretty much like the entire screen all at once if you want to, which is absurd. So yeah, that's pretty good. Goddamn. Uh, admittedly, it does leave it... Uh, does leave a little to do. You know what well, I think no. part of it is? I think it's be partly because he's able to stun even the largest of enemies in this game. <laughs> yeah. Part of the part of the little issue it is where it can be repetitive is ju it's just that the formations aren't properly laid out. Yeah, I suppose so. Also, I love this stage, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's simple and... Um, Literally point, Bloody Palace. Basically. L literally the same thing. It really is. I'll, I don't know if you ever noticed this about Blade Palace, actually, is that every time you progress to a new floor, you can, if you look off in the distance, you can actually see the next platform you're going to and the one you just came from. Yeah. Very small details like that really make, like, well, well one of the reasons why I love Relic Dead on the Cry in general. <laughs> but, like, this is a really cool thing nonetheless. <laughs> the only thing that I wish that happened was that we're going to change more often to reflect where you were. Yeah. Like, p places in, uh, in Blade Palace actually get pretty nuts. Yeah, especially towards the end of four. Yeah, four is like goes full on nighttime, and there's some cool shit with that. There's nighttime, and then there's acid hell. Yeah, basically. Why well, don't be called acid hell? Because you fight forty of the the angel enemies all at once. Oh my god! Not all at once. They spawn in, but there's a lot of them in regardless. <laughs> he really does a ridiculous <laughs> attack power, though. <laughs> And you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they did intentionally make him this overpowered. I don't think I don't think people would forgive them. Would forgive them if they didn't. I suppose you're right, but I would say Moss Moon has always been relatively mid tier in these games. And that's what I'm talking about. If they did, if they didn't eventually, you make him as properly as strong as Yukimura, who by virtue of having of having uh, the Hell Stab, has always been infinitely better. The eventually, people would have noticed. Yeah. Also, yeah, these arenas get fucking crowded. Eventually, someday, I will have to invest time into DMZ, DMC, and trying to complete the uh, Blight Palace in that game. Because I still feel that game is actually pretty good. I know. One of the few people out there who actually thinks DMZ, DMC is still good, even though I really love the original series. 
I mean, I like it. I do too. I actually think it's, it's got real good merits about it. <laughs> not perfect, not very stretch of imagination, but still good. What we got? Let me ask you a question. Yes. Are you one of the people that think uh, that thinks that DMC two is terrible? Is terrible as entirely as a game in general, even in a vacuum, or terrible in terms of its place in the franchise? I think it's terrible in the way it's. Not in how bit it's different from the rest of the series, but in how it's fairly uninspired ha in what it's trying to do. If it was, if it was, our style wise is also pretty weak too. If it was, it's a, if it was the first game, if it was its own separate game, everything, everything else about the game left intact. What would you say about it then? If it was See, just a game by itself before uh, before Devil May Cry really became an established franchise. See, here's my thing about that though. I don't think Devil May Cry 2 is already that bad of a game. In fact, it's actually still pretty good. But the, the thing about it is that Devil May Cry has always had a really f good inspired art design, and DMC2 doesn't quite meet that standard. It it wants to. In terms of story, I no, I fully understand that not everything can be about the Sparta storyline, and you want to actually diverse yourself. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is just how uninspired the graphics look sometimes. And as for and as for its own combat, it's relative. I I haven't seen too much of it before, but it's relatively the same as to what the original is, and it it introduced the wall jump, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> really? Actually, I actually heard it's got its own elements altogether, so it's not a horrible game in any stretch of imagination. It's just it introduced a lot of serious mainstays. It introduced the mission screen. Yeah. Oh my god, his portrait down there. <laughs> he does not look happy. No, it does not. It looks like he's trying to eat the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon's gotta eat. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if Devil May Cry 2 took some more artistic liberties, I think it would be fine. Or it, w it would meet the standards of Devil May Cry 1 and possibly surpass them. Maybe. Uh, you know it would be nice? Yeah. If Devil May Cry acknowledged its resemblance to Sengoku Basra as well. Oh god, yeah. But then again, we need more Devil May Cry in general in order to pull that off. I would I would not mind. In fact, I would openly welcome an outfit for Dante that was basically Moss Mooney's outfit. Don't... I would actually really like that. I think that'd be perfect. Give him six swords. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably can't use all of them, and they would purely be aesthetic, but you can still have it. Absolutely. I do think someone using, like, the Six Swords style of, of Mosmini would be pretty cool, though. I think Virgil would benefit from that partially. Yeah. Maybe. He's a little too focused for that, but I think he could make use of something like that. <laughs> or, like, a Six Swords style in general. Get back here, you little bastard. <laughs> Are you facing three? No, yeah, okay, you're only facing two bosses right now. I thought you were facing three all at the same time. That'll come later. Also, I mean, how long have you been waiting to be able to play through uh, this Sword of Blade Palace with Monsamune I'm recording? <sighs> Three years, at least. Has it really been that long? Damn. This game came out... This game came out... Uh, actually, no, if I'm being completely honest... Six. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Well, this game came out two years ago. It was announced three. But, no, I've been waiting... I've been waiting for... For a... Call us a... Uh... Coliseum or tournament or just regular square stage with infinitely spawning in enemies in the sort of game mm -hmm. s ever since ever since I first played Sengoku Boss in 2012. Oh fuck yes! I think there's I honestly think Koei games need this kind of mode more often. They did once and no one liked it. It was Sega so Warriors 4 2, I believe. No, but yes, but no, <clears throat> that was terrible for different reasons. Uh, the Morasame Castle. No, I'm talking about 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 Eternal Eclipse mode from Berserk and the Band of the Hawk, where uh, where you're inside the Eclipse by uh, fighting demons forever until you die. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is the game ran like ass, so couldn't really take advantage of it. Yeah. I still want to try a game for myself though. I just when really it... want to play his guts. <laughs> I'll eventually have have to buy it when it gets when it gets to a decent enough sale price. And that we can claim that'll be our first Let's Play of a Berserk game. Yeah. Unless we get the Dreamcast game, which, frankly, I have, I am working on potentially getting a Dreamcast emulator working. I've been saying this for the longest time. You need to get, you need to get that Berserk thing uh, off of off of the uh, panel banner. 
Which one? The uh Oh, yeah, in terms the, of like other good stuff? No, uh the the adverti the advertising banner banner at the end of the projection for all of our panels. How you say this is who we are and what games we do, but then you list some, some example games and you Well, have... it, we will cover Berserk games if they become available to us. Or rather, okay, I'll cover Berserk games if I have to. I don't mind. I prefer, I prefer the original Sword of the Berserk. God's Rage is one hell of an interesting game, if it's, nothing else. It's got incredible Irish dude voicing Guts. <laughs> That's the voice of uh, the dad from Rugrats. Oh my Christ. <laughs> Fucking stew pickles. Yeah. God damn it. That is something. I'll do you one better. Shoot. You, you know Puck? Yes. Puck is Liquid Snake. Oh my Christ. <laughs> uh, this is too good. Yeah, Puck is voiced by a guy in that game. This is the second time we've referenced Liquid Snake today. First, we were looking at videos earlier on for Fireman Warriors with uh, male Kamui. And now this. God. Uh, <laughs> I always love how everyone gets so... Well, aside from you, because you don't know anyone's names in Fire Emblem, but everyone always gets so tri gets so tripped up and confused when I say uh, when I say the name Kamui instead of Korn, because Korn is a fucking stupid name. <laughs> Hi, Korn! <laughs> how is Korn a stupid name? Korin. Korin. Yes, I know Korin, but why why is Korin a stupid name? Compared to Kamui? I mean, I get that, but you're referencing a character more than an actual Japanese deity. That's the character's Japanese name. Is that why you call Alphonse Ed? Or not? Uh, fuck, no. Aster? Aster, Aster, yeah. Yes, I told you this. I explained it to you. <laughs> Aster is a stupid name. His Japanese name is Edo. You could have just called him Edward in English. That's all you had to fucking do, so that's why I just call him Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> why did you think I called him Ed? No, I knew about that. I knew about that. I don't think Korn's a stupid name, honestly, but... Okay. Compar compared to Kamui, at least. It's funnier, too, because... because uh, in English, the series has had... Fire Emblem has had a rather dumb track record of, of uh, accidentally changing a character's Japanese name to the name of... Uh, to, uh, to the name of characters previously from the series. Wonderful. Oh, those guys are boulders. Robin's name in uh, Japanese uh, from Fire Emblem Awakening is Reflet. The reason why they're not named... Reflet? Reflet. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> the reason why they're not named Robin is Japanese is because there's a character from Fire Emblem 2 named Robin. Huh. And when that ki and when that game got remade for the 3DS, Fire Emblem Echoes uh, Shadows of Valentia, they had to rename they had to change his name in English to Tobin. <laughs> okay, Tobin is a dumb name. Yes. Uh. And so there are some people that liter that literally uh, get on the uh, Claw, boxer, dictator bullshit when talking about which Robin is Robin. <laughs> oh man, that shit. I'm not kidding. I, I'm not surprised now. <laughs> I have a oh. funny, I have a strange idea for you. I'll, hold that thought one second. Okay. In that same game, in Japanese, and they kept his Japanese name, there's a character named Kamui, who is a samurai. Hmm. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, go for it. So, we've been talking a lot about Fire Emblem lately. Yes. And you recently lost the save file for Fire Emblem Warriors. Absolutely, whenever you're ready. <laughs> do you want to do a let's play of Fire Emblem Warriors? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I need to do I need to do a fair bit of grinding first, but yes, absolutely. Honestly, it wouldn't be too bad because like we could, okay, between two of us we could play our play on very hard mode, we wouldn't be affected even on like level. Oh no, it's not about it's not about levels, it's just that you it's just that you have to grind out maps to unlock the last couple of characters. Ah. That's what I'm talking about. Piss. You can uh so, we definitely wouldn't have time to do something like that today anyways. So oh god, no, not today. It's already six. I'm already, trust me, I'm already working on it. The reason I ask is because... Okay, I know we're already going to extras video by now because fuck this. Uh, the reason I ask is because I have been... I've had interest in Fire Emblem for a couple years now. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes had a hand in that, luckily. <laughs> that I was playing uh, the GBA game with Lin in it. Blazing Blade. Yep. Pretty good game. Got halfway through it. Unfortunately, my save file is kind of weird, so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I wouldn't mind. Give it a shot. Absolutely. Cool. And the funny thing is, that game does have co-op. Yes, it does. I wouldn't entirely recommend that either, actually, because... because We'd be going back to a 720p60 format. I want you to think about that. It's been a while. We haven't done that since Pirate Warriors 2. Oh, my God. 
The Pirate Warriors 2 is where I started being able to do 60. Yes, Pirate Warriors 3 was when we went... Well, we recorded 1030. Sort of. That's because I still didn't have my HD 60. So it's funny that we'd be going back to that. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is beautiful. This is a mini game something. You kill enough of them in time and you get... You get either a, mo a money bonus or an attack bonus. Oh yeah, isn't this like 60 levels deep or something? Yeah, which is why, which is unfortunate actually because I completely forgot that this thing doesn't have an actual stage hey, counter on screen. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Goddamn. Yeah, because we were going to switch off and then I realized, oh wait, this doesn't have a counter. Nah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it, we're, I think we're still doing okay anyway. <laughs> yeah. Also, the fact that there's been so much fucking wife material for Fire Emblem Warriors, I'm just like... If we're going to be doing Senra and Kagura at some point, I might as well get... <laughs> I'm inevitably going to lose the rest of my female audience anyway who that isn't gay, so why not? I would actually want to do Senra and Kagura first, at least one of them first. How long do you think Senra and Kagura would take? Uh, 10 hours. Mm. Three sessions tops. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> Shinobi versus is not is by no means a long game. No. A lot of dialogue in it, but can your PC run it decently well? Yeah, we can talk about this. We can definitely talk about this. Hey, KG, <laughs> you're about to get fucked. I hate those enemies that he has with they has with him, the fucking vacuum guys. Yeah, I do love the different enemies that actually get thrown in here because it actually makes it makes it so it's not completely two dimensional with the enemy types you have to face, but still. Still, though, the fact that you're com basically completely untouchable. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> What's up? Ah, uh, nothing. Nothing interesting yet, anyway. In Get meantime, in there. I'm gonna go see if that live stream's on yet. <laughs> what was the one I'm going? Oh, yep, it's on. Yep. I don't know how long it's been going on, but it's on. The, I know you haven't read it. The apology is, isn't isn't nearly as long as the document. It's maybe like. It's like, at, no, I know. Mo at I've most heard. it's five pages long, so this won't be very long. We'll still have time to watch the whole thing. I have heard. And I have popcorn in my car. <laughs> you need snacks at work, yo. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. Oh no, but I imagine he's going to be spending a lot of time dissecting how shitty Mike's apol uh Not even apology refute was. Yeah, that's what a <sighs> Literally. Yeah, this person said this. No, this happened. No, this happened. Literally just turned into a trying into playground insult at that point. God, my absolute favorite. This person said this, this, and this, but this person said it said it in a really mean way, so they're automatically wrong because, <laughs> because they were rude. My yeah. God, I'm gonna do a thing. You didn't pay us, and some of you are you gonna play it now? No, no, no. no. Uh, I was. I was gonna look up the Social Blade 4 channel awesome. <laughs> Don't embarrass them. No, I've been hearing jokes about it frequently recently. Uh, about how much how many subscribers they've been losing. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of red. That is a lot of red. Did you see the teching video? Yes, I watched the teching video. <laughs> and lo and behold, everything started going downhill on Monday. Yep. On th Friday, they lost 7,500 subscribers. <laughs> Actually, goddamn, dude, you should look at these numbers. Oh my god! They've lost 30,000 subs- Okay, yeah, they've lost 30,000 subscribers. 33,000, actually. In the last handful of days. Oh my god, fuck. Because that document was released on April 2nd. Actually, when does the channel awesome have over a million subscribers? God damn. <sighs> I wouldn't qualify that as a whole lot, given their previous no. track record. One of the things- one of the things that they said that they kept trying to refute about was we never said anything about stealing any of- any of your money. We use we use you guys as, as you guys use us as an opportunity to oh. to, be, uh, to be hosted on a website with uh, with thirty with uh, thirty million unique viewers. My ass, that website ever had thirty million <laughs> and one million unique views per month. No, that's in no. two thousand in two thousand ten. I fucking doubt it. Exactly. PewDiePie didn't have half that number at that time. There's no fucking way. Actually, no, you're talking about having the problems like 11 and 12, so. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can handle a lot, but those tigers are something else. Yeah. You still in here? Oh. 
I don't know who the generic NPC Grill is, but for some reason she's already like halfway up the scale of top wifers in this series. <laughs> it's not a high bar to climb. There's it's... only there's only like seven. Yeah, it's that's fair. <laughs> there's like fifty characters in this series, and there's only like seven females. Speaking of, hello. I can't wait for us to showcase the outfits out. <laughs> If you want to still do that, because oh of, yeah, we can still do we can still do what's in here today. Because you know of uh, now Tora's outfits, I think you know which one I'm referring to. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of them, but yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. I think we're gonna put some ideas in people's heads. <laughs> Jesus. Art people, <laughs> get on it. You. Hey, you fuckhole! We're gonna have fun with you. <clears throat> And look at that, we didn't need any bullshit chains or anything. <laughs> I'm gonna say something. I felt really bad actually, like, making you sit through that fucking level. <laughs> yeah, because we had to go through it like four times. And... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, God, I want to help contribute, but I would probably do worse than you are doing right now. You were talking about scenery changes. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Definitely gotta get off the ground before those before those bombs hit. Oh yeah, you're also basically invincible when you fucking do that attack. That's things are so far, far, far high off the ground. I'd also like to uh, now finally say for the record that uh, the thing about getting stronger, uh, Rembo thing with uh, doing more damage, the, uh, all of the gauges that are at max, uh, the blue, uh, the blue, blue, and uh, yellow one, mm -hmm. as well as uh, as well as the symbol there next to our health being the symbol for, I think it's either the symbol for great or for big. Hmm. It's uh, it's the symbol used, I think, in Fire Blast. I thought that was the kanji for actual fire. It might be, but uh, actually, no. I think that's a different kanji from fire. Uh, no matter what it is, uh, we're maxed now, so uh, so all of our attacks are extended and they do way more damage. Is that what that means? Yep. Ah, oh, damn. Hence why this is going longer. Is that what? That's what. That's why. That's why you're supposed to be so aggressive. So you can, uh, so you actually get stronger as you play in real time. That applies to story mode, right? Yep. Okay, so that was why we were actually doing a pretty noticeably more damage to Nobuyuki than earlier on. Yep. Because I and uh, and the gauge goes down the more damage you take. That's why I was doing more damage to him was because Eiyasu barely hit me. Yeah. And my gauge was going up the more I was hitting him. Man, this makes me want to get back on playing Bloodborne right now. Because that game, you also have to play very aggressively versus regular Dark Souls. <laughs> For example, there's only one shield in a game, it's literally made of fucking wood. <laughs> to give an example, also you're able to parry enemies by shooting them. It's brilliant. Uh, I love Bloodborne so fucking much, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what we need? Fuck Dark Souls Remastered, we need Demon Souls Remastered. Never you know, the, never, I, I... Never let the beginning of a franchise die. No, 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 I think that might be happening, actually. Oh? I have... The reason I think that is because in, in February... The servers for Demon Souls on the PS3 actually shut down. Yeah. So I think that might be a possibility. I won't rule that out. Also, shout out to the kids who are picking up Dark Souls on on a Switch and playing it for the first time. <laughs> Good luck, because literally nothing about the game is. Be I hear there's nothing really being changed in the balances. So, if it hits Sun still from Chaos Y Hander, Giant Dad builds return, fucking R1 Falcon spam returns. Hell yeah. Good times. It's good to be home. <laughs> Hey, wife. It's good to be home. <laughs> ah. Oh, suddenly. Wow, that's cool. Buildings that like popped out uh, really close. Uh, interesting. No, you fucking don't. My gauge. God still is damn! <laughs> I look like one slice took off a third of her hit points. <laughs> that's the power of a ma of a maximum. Yeah. I like how my how my only witch uh, R two attack is just called Heartbolt, <laughs> the only one. Seems he does that more. You really want me to give it uh, given the circumstance? Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> I seriously can't, really wish that this version of Awesome New was playable under Dell and Cry 4's engine. That'd be so goddamn cool. You could argue we already have that and that his name is Virgil, but still. <laughs> No, I think this is even better than Virgil. Definitely not more technical, but definitely more powerful. Oh god, yeah, no. I mean, Virgil already has some ridiculous space control in 4 versus what he had in 3. And Virgil was already more powerful than Dante in 3 by a margin, but god fucking damn. 
Uh, that reminds me. Uh, none of the cheat codes uh, work in DMC HD PS4. That is odd. Um, you should actually try it again because the, D the cheat codes in DMC 3 are finicky in the HD collection. They're all no, it's actually, it's actually been uh, been uh, noted that they don't. Hmm. That's fine, though, because when you do the cheat code, you can't save the game. Yeah, but if you're just, if you're just trying to show off, like you often try to show off the game to me. Oh, yeah, no. Um, that could be good, but you also... you can't level select you you're only able to select each uh stage at each difficulty at uh stage one huh yeah so it it means less than you think ultimately you only unlock the costumes and the character both characters and uh all the oh, hello this is funny <laughs> well one of us is gonna have to go and change <laughs> god damn it i was about to say that <laughs> and it won't be me oh my <laughs> christ <laughs> Why though? <laughs> or I can just eat you. <laughs> Fucking Cyber Dragon Infinity up in this bitch. <laughs> More or less, yeah, we're about as powerful. Man. Well, I'll get back to recording Legacy of the Duelist. Oh, don't worry, we're getting there. We will. We're broaching on the end. Of uh, this mode? Or Legacy of the Duelist? Legacy. Oh, yeah, no. We, ha we only have one lengthy recording le session left to go and we're done. And without with any with, with no story to pay attention to, and just duels. <laughs> Arc five will be pretty short, but I know Arc you said five. you wanted to at least like talk about the story that's not being talked about. That's still up to you on how on whether on whether or not you want to do that because you you're gonna have to edit around that. Not terribly. I'm just gonna. I can't just like let you talk and introduce the audience to the basis of what's going on. Yeah, it's not entirely that simple. <laughs> Because Arc 5 is a complicated beast. <laughs> then again, we do have that secret project that might be worth talking about more there. <laughs> ah, yes, yeah. that one. Let's. I just don't, I, I, I say it's a secret project because I don't want the audience to know about what we've done with that. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Uh, I don't usually like to hide things from my audience, unless it's a, a good surprise. I know and you don't. One. That's actually one of the things that annoys me. Because more often than not, <laughs> you'll tell everyone like a month, like a month or three before a recording goes up. Like I wanted that game to be a surprise. I kept Storm a secret. No, I want. I want a couple of people knew about it, but I want to keep it a surprise. No, I wanted you to be a secret because it's kind of out of nowhere from us. Oh no! If you're not following me on Discord, no one fucking knows. Yeah, but most of our viewers are in there anyway. Not really. Talkative ones. Yeah. 60 people versus 1,800 viewers is not a lot of well, It's not a lot of them. That depends on what your active viewer base is. <laughs> they show up in Nar for Naruto. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yes. Wonderful. This is a fun game. Yep. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, apparently Dad's in here. <laughs> well, I guess so, yeah. Huh. I, guess da I guess Dad's the pilot. <laughs> I... Oh, I guess so. Huh. I guess he just stole that. <laughs> no one wants it. Then again, apparently he's both a necromancer and a summoner, so, I mean, we could probably just make it. <laughs> You mean he comes from Spira? I was gonna have a little more class than say uh, Esper's, but okay. <laughs> like more Final Fantasy VI. Okay. Yeah, Kai. Uh. No, you don't. Oops. Wrong way. Oh shit. Nope. Mr. Buzzsaws. I love how symbolic it is how just we're trivializing everyone so quickly using this ridiculous form of Masamune. <laughs> if there were to be a next Senran, uh, fuck, Sego <laughs> Kubasura game, which I hope there's a new uh, Sego Kubasura game. And a uh, Senran Kakura they, game. They probably need to nerf him a little bit. As sad as it is to say, it probably needs to happen. See, I actually want to disagree. I actually disagree with you because you only get one chance to do it and it's really easy. I want to fight this form as a proper boss. This form of Masamune? Yeah, hell yeah! I want to fight this form. This form as a proper boss fight. 
Sort of, sort of like what we had with uh, uh, Nobuyuki. I want a full. I want something like that, but with this I'm, character. I'm gonna be weird and say I would actually pay to have quick time events in this kind of boss fight. Storm style, yeah. A little storm style and also Metal Gear Rising style. I know I keep making that reference, but it really is a good reference. The white coat matches his white hair. It really does, and also this level of speed mixed with, you know, <laughs> cut what you will. <laughs> Have you also, seen the, the idea of... You you watched the Senator Armstrong fight before, right? Yeah. Okay, so remember some of those QTEs where Armstrong would chuck fucking helicopters at, Ry at Raiden in that fiery area? Yeah. And it also, like, punched the fuck out of each other? Yeah. <laughs> Both, both Raiden attacking one point on his chest when he's still armored, where he couldn't penetrate it. And then later on, where they would punch the other, like, fuck at each other. I want shit like that with Yukimura and Masamune. Yeah. Like, I think this game came very close to the ideal, uh, boss fights for Basra. Got it, playing in, that was so good. <laughs> We're on some berserk shit. God, we are. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. That's cool. uh, that's cute, but no. My f my favorite thing nowadays is the meme going around of uh, Kojima holding a sword in front in front of the card that he cut in half. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> By the way, I follow Kojima on Twitter now. The man's a magical beast, as well as Matt Mickelson. Is his avatar still a Lego? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because his avatar for several years, his Twitter avatar for years, was a Lego of himself. Oh my god. That... Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yep. I forgot about that. No, it's his actual picture. But it really is just as crazy uh, in person as you'd expect it to be at, on those Tumblr posts. Is it? Is it him with... Uh... Is it the full, the full, the full body picture of him with the shirt that says "Big Boss" with an arrow pointing to his dong? <laughs> no, it's not that one. <laughs> I actually don't know what his current profile picture is. I'll have to go check it out. Uh, fighting ninja. Hey, speaking of riding, I'm fighting a ninja. One ninja, but not two. Hmm. It's funny. It's funny the whole uh, ninja thing in Senran Kagura because. Um, because before they before they did the proper gameplay crossovers, back with uh, Hyperdimension Neptunia three, one of the DLC characters you could get was uh, was from Marvelous, and it was literally it was more or less literally just Asuka but with orange hair. Huh. And uh, they and they made they made they made a whole bunch of a, a whole bunch of ninja jokes, but the ninja jokes they make they were making were uh, Naruto ninja jokes, <clears throat> which is funny because Senran Kagura character. Oh yeah, I, I vaguely remember something about that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There was a get off my dick. There was a Neptunian character like that. God, she was only in the third game and the remake of the third game. Yeah, the remakes were weird. They randomly reintroduced characters that hadn't been in the series since the very first game. Hmm. Red, the Dragon Lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Liam got kicked from his MCN. Holy shit! What? Uh, oh, he's been uploading shit that infringes on copyright. What? Oh, damn. Define. Uh, I don't know. I... Huh. I mean, I'm not sub to him, but I would imagine you are. I follow him from time to time. Like, I haven't watched his recent stuff because it's games I don't know about, but, like, holy shit. Huh. Okay. Part of me wants to be petty, but I'm bigger than that. Cheers, guy. Hope you find something better. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, he was described. He was with full screen. Oh, the full screen is oh. utter, utter garbage. I thought he was the one that introduced you to your network. He introduced me to full screen. I I tried to. I initially oh, tried yeah, to get with right. full screen. I that didn't go that. through. So then I went for a curse because I was like, "Hey, you have to have over a thousand subscribers, and you have to have a, one other requirement that isn't easy." I'm like, "Okay, you have requirements, so fuck it, I'll go for it." I make I make nine percent of my revenue now. <laughs> Fucking great. I forgot about that. They actually rejected you out of hand. Yeah, that, I'm like, I have. You guys will ask. Liam had half my subscribers at the time he recommended me, and I got rejected. I don't get it either, but sure. Does he do more more mainstream games than you do? Well, to some to some people, no matter what the no matter what, what the actual truth is, anime doesn't sell to some people. What really got him his his following was his uh dub his dub playthrough of. 
uh, Shantae that he did. Dub? He, he had uh, amateur voice actors uh, voicing it, and he did a pretty good job. Amateur as in people anyone has actually heard of, or just people that he had the Online voice actors. Google? Online voice actors. For real? Yeah. Any, any names we might know? Probably not. Okay, then. I appeared in something. <laughs> huh? I appeared in something, and I voiced King Piccolo once. <laughs> I don't... I choose not to re reference that, though, because I... My audio was peaking. I didn't know that at the time. What year is this? Two years ago. <laughs> Never really told anyone about it. I liked it to be a surprise. What's and, up, kiddos? Anyway, yeah, no. Uh, Kojima doesn't. He's just kind of, kind of like got a regular picture of himself for his portrait. Ah, uh, that's boring. The Lego was more yeah. fun. Also, damn, we got a new stage. It looks really goddamn cool. I know. I love this stage. Fuck, that's nice. Now, the neat thing is, after you beat the uh, is after you beat this mode at least once. You can freely pick whatever stage you want to start from. So hmm. you can start right from nighttime. You know, also, I think at some point we should... If we're talking about Koa games we could do, there's also, still also Gundam Reborn. Yeah, we've been... That's a long one, but, but that's definitely one we're going to do. I theoretically don't think it will take that long. Maybe three recording sessions, two, one for two uh, sections of each. Gundam Seed will of course take the longest because of course Gundam will. Seed has like eight stages per, and it has and it has uh, it has two full accounts. Yeah, it cover at least it covers uh, Universal Century pretty well up until you get to Unicorn. Not true, actually. It cover it covers uh, seventy nine. It covers uh, seventy nine, eighty five, and the and what Unicorn was out at the time, which was about three stages. It also covers Charge Counterattack. It, no, I don't think it does. I it does. Then it's if it does, then it's very short. Yeah, like four or five stages, yeah, because of the movie and everything. No, I think it has to be. A, uh, it has to max at three. Yeah, because because there was more than a couple that maxed at three, but it's like you'll oh, put Jesus. that in, you'll put that in, you'll put those movies, and you'll put you'll put in hmm. seed twice, but you won't. But you won't put in. Uh, you won't. Put no, in, no wing. No G Gundam. No G Gundam. No do, uh, no double Zeta. No crossbone Gundam. I nope. don't care if it was still a manga. <laughs> no, uh, no double Zeta. None of the other spinoffs. N uh, no double O. Double O, yeah. Double O, which was which was all which was a full fifty episodes long and well over by the year two thousand fourteen. Uh huh. No g double O movie. Actually, that might be for the best. Actually, they did. It's it was one of the DLC stages. Oh uh, yeah. Awakening uh, of the Trail Laser. It was awful. Seriously. Double, uh, Double O Gundam is the best introductory Gundam by a wide margin. It's fantastic. It's still one of the best series overall, but that movie at the end is awful. Do not watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking tornado attack. Uh. So, in terms of Warriors games, we can totally do uh, Fire Emblem. We could do uh, Gundam. There's Berserk if we could decide to get to that sometime. <laughs> I still hold on wanting, to, uh, wanting to do an actual mainline game for both for both for both mainline series, uh, Samurai and Dynasty, which now would, which would even now still probably just be uh, Vanilla Four and Eight XL. We could get fucking crazy with empires, actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seven empires. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. A, a joint account between the two of us would actually be fucking nuts because I play very aggressively and you use actual tactics. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We've been planning on doing stuff for both seven and eight empires for literally four years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who are we wifing? <laughs> that's a good. I I nominate Sao Sao as a uh, uh, sworn brother. He was okay. my first, and he's my only sworn brother. I would have said the him... man is deserving of it. I would have said him or Shahu Dune. As for wife, either either Shing Sai or Yuanji. Maybe Lianchi. Leonchi's the tits, uh, Shing Tsai is uh, the sword and shield, I would only and Yuanji is Yuanji. I would only wife Leonchi if it was her Dynasty Warriors 8 outfit. That's, avail going, that's, going. A that's available in 8. You can still do that. 8 is the one where you get to have kids, so that's where you have to, where you have to make a conscious Oh, I, I was talking about if we are to do Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires. We'd have, to do, we'd have to do a run of at least both, but that's fine, because each one would, would max out at two sessions tops. Yeah. So it'd be uh, so for two full games, it'd be about... Or for for one round of each, it'd be a maximum of four sessions. Okay, so the way I did my first uh, play through Dynasty Warriors Seven Empires, I joined up with uh, some gold empire. It really sucked. I eventually had I, I got Sao Sao as the Swarm Brother. A couple years later, I raised I had I held an uprising against him. I narrowly won because I had like no supporters. 
besides me and him, me and Sasa, our brothers through and through, and we fucking, yeah, we did it. And I recruited everyone in human history. And it was tits. <laughs> We're gonna have to do something fun with whatever character we end up making in, uh, or, oh. or using whatever story we end up doing in uh, Eight Empires, because because the kids can be can either be legend can either be legendary legendarily awesome or le or legendarily terrible looking. Oh yeah. Example: I was doing the Toho scenario once, and I married her to one uh, to one of the officers, one of the. Uh, the new officer that was introduced in 8XL, I can't remember his name offhand, but but their cre but the child they created was literally Old Snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big boss. <laughs> uh, we, we can we can fucking <laughs> to quote a uh, terrible Overwatch video. Let's meme our way to victory, boys. <laughs> that reminds me. Did you hear the story about Matthew Mercer and Overwatch? I know full well about the things he do. He does as McCree. Well, he'll just no, not just that. He's actually Blizzard has actually banned him from talking about it because he's in, because he's encouraged way too much fan art. Wait, really? Yeah, he's encour he's encouraging all of the ships, uh, les <laughs> lesbian, gay, straight, yaoi, what have you. Oh my he's god! He's uh, he he's telling everyone draw everything and send everything to me. I love you all, <laughs> and they're t and they're literally. And they're literally te uh, they're literally telling him not to do that. <laughs> Matthew Mercer is my favorite human being on the planet. Oh my god. Uh, I want to meet this man so bad. Come Holy to a shit. convention near us. Seriously. God damn. Him, Kyle, a little a little bit of David Vincent. Those are like my favorite fucking dudes. Oh, also Robbie and Ben. <laughs> You didn't catch my button. <laughs> <laughs> no one here is gonna know who we're talking about. I love it. Uh, we we're only seven, at... seventeen minutes. That was only seventeen minutes. God damn, that was great. Usually don't. Uh, by the way, look at those numbers: six, 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 six. Woo! <laughs> my inner Satanist is appeased. <laughs> Do you want to tell them about that, or? Oh yeah, I'm a Satanist, guys. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's out in the open now. 